Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, Mr. Jepson, thank you for your service as a Marine in Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, I think that probably prepares uh, someone for doing lots of jobs, including the one you nominate for. But thank you very much, sir. And uh, let me turn my attention to the nominees of the Security Exchange Commission. Thank you very much uh, for your willingness to serve. I'd like to ask both of you the same question initially. And, uh, Shareholder protection, uh, uh, investor protection is critical to the SEC's mission. And, and not only their protection, but also ensure that there's real shareholder governance uh, in a corporation. Um, and there are a number of number of issues that are arising. Uh, uh, the issue of cybersecurity, issue of climate change, issue of uh, uh, political spending, uh, all of these shareholders should, I think, have some voice in and, and be protected. And then let me ask just specifically, what is your, uh, starting with Ms. Fairfax, what is your top objective or top uh, initiative with respect to shareholder protection and investor protection? Thank you so much for the question. Um, and as my opening remarks, I, I hope reflected, I, I think investor protection is extremely uh, important. Obviously, it's a critical aspect of the SEC's uh, mission. Um, and I think that everything that we do um, um, at the mission, uh, at the uh, SEC, if I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed, um, will relate to investor protection. I think one priority is market structure, and that is very much interlinked with investor protection. Um, as I mentioned, I don't think you can really um, protect investors if you don't have fair, orderly, and efficient markets and make sure they're operating in a structure um, that treats them fair, fairly and, and a market structure that's uh, secure. Um, the other thing I think is really important is issues related to corporate disclosure. Um, I think making sure that investors have the right information. Um, we talked about um, what's the kind of crux of the SEC, and it's about putting um, a spotlight um, on information and making sure p investors have that so that they can make appropriate uh, decisions. I also, which shouldn't come as a surprise, think that corporate governance uh, issues, especially issues around the proxy apparatus and, and making sure that the voting structure works appropriately um, and that changes in the way in which shareholders vote and the matters that they vote on are taken into account um, when looking at that structure and kind of move, trying to, figuring out how to move forward. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Perth, please. As Professor Fairfax underscored, investor protection issues are important um, across the board of what the SEC does. One area that I think uh, we'll see um, changes, positive changes made for investors is the disclosure effectiveness review that's going on now trying to find the information that users need and present it to them in a way that they can use it, um, potentially incorporating new technologies, ensuring that, um, that the disclosure mechanism at the SEC is up to date in terms of technology. I think all of that will be very helpful for investors. Um, in terms of my work on the Investor Advisory Committee, uh, we worked on a proposal which I think has merit as well, which is trying to do a better job of aggregating information about financial professionals and making that available to investors um, in one place. And I, I think that's an exciting initiative that the SEC would, would uh, do well to work on. Now, I will say that perhaps when I get to the SEC, I'll discover that there are other more pressing issues, and I, I want to keep an open door to, to that possibility as well. Thank you. Uh, there's been some discussion about course benefit analysis which implies, if you're going to do it correctly, that you have to have access to all the costs that are relevant, which would imply, well, let me ask, would the SEC, if they had that direction, also have the authority to go in and get the cost of different companies, some of which might be argued could be proprietary? The Paperwork Reduction Act actually limits the ability of the SEC to, to go to more than nine people. So when I was at the SEC and I did work on some economic analysis when I was there, um, we were able to call three small, three medium, and three large companies. Now, needless to say, that leads to some potential gaps. Um, one way that the SEC gets around that is to ask for comment that's, that has data in it, and I think those are sometimes the most effective comments or comments that, that bring data with them. Um, now, certainly, any cost-benefit analysis has assumptions, and those assumptions need to be spelled out. And where there are data gaps, the agency needs to be very clear, we have a gap in data here, and that it's all out there, and then people can respond to that. Well, I think your comment is actually very revealing, because there's this mantra about we just sort of do cost-benefit analysis, and 
What you've indicated, first of all, there's only a few companies that the SEC can directly ask, given the present system. And second, they rely upon comments which are voluntary, and so some people could withhold data until uh, after the rule was promulgated, then present the data as, well, this is, you know, your costs are not accurate. Uh, so I think we have to be, I think, very, very sort of careful as we pursue this approach. The second issue is one, I, I, it's, the, it's, and I, I think you alluded to it in terms of the minerals rules, it's quantifying social benefits, which is always a very challenging uh, uh, problem. So uh, I think, again, that this is something we, uh, the SEC does, but we have to be very, very careful about the limitations, both legal limitations and practical limitations. But uh, thank you both. Uh, you're bringing both incredibly robust academic and legal uh, backgrounds to a very demanding job, and I thank you.